Well, it's the first day of BlizzCon. I'm joined right now by Raynad himself at the end of the first day of the Invitational, or it's wrapping up behind us right now, in with two ends, or in with two ends in it. Uh, how is that going for you? Uh, it's going pretty good. We're uh, two and one, which means we definitely advance to tomorrow. Um, and then depending on how this match pans out right here, uh, our tiebreakers might be good enough that we finish first. So we'll see. And what what do you think of this? Because this is a little different from like the super hardcore Hearthstone esports experience. Is it kind of mixing up this year? How's it been for you to participate in it? I mean, it's super fun. You know, I, I've definitely I've cast it on the BlizzCon stage. I've done like little events here, you know, most years, and uh, it's cool to actually be on as a player. And uh, you know, hopefully bring back a trophy. That would be that would be awesome. So uh, you know, it's definitely not the rigorous qualification process that traditional Hearthstone esports has, but uh, eh, we take those. Uh, hopefully, we, hopefully we win. Yeah. Do you like working as a team instead of as an individual? Is that enjoyable for you? Uh, kind of. Yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, it's a nice like system of checks and balances. You know, I I definitely felt like uh, I, I was the guy on the group project in high school that did most of the work on this one okay. this time around, but okay. uh, for the games themselves, it's really nice to like have reassurance that like, you know, hey guys, I want to make this play. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Some plays are really cl close, so it's just, it's always nice to have a team behind you so you're more confident in your plays. Yeah. A little bit of shared responsibility. Now, I don't know how much you know about or can speak to the Kobolds and Catacombs announcement that we saw today, uh, but I'm curious if that's something that is interesting to you, exciting to you, if you feel like this is going to be a disaster. I never know with what the answers I'm going to get from you. Yeah, I mean, normally I have nothing but good things to say about Hearthstone expansions coming out. You know, Hearthstone's a game of uh, peaks and valleys when it comes to player base and viewership and things like that. Uh, so whenever we're on the cusp of a new expansion releasing, I mean, it's, it's just good for me, like, for business, but I also have a lot more fun as a player. Um, I, so normally I have nothing but positive things to say. I mean, with that said, though, a couple of the mechanics here I really don't like that they showed. Um, I One of my least favorite cards in the game that I think is some of the worst design Hearthstone's ever had was uh, Barnes. Oh, yeah. And uh, they basically turned it into a keyword and are now putting it on, like, dozens of cards. Yes. So, like, there's a card. Uh, they're balancing it a little bit better. You can't just pull any minion. The minion has to cost, like, four or less. But, you know, the range between getting a one-drop or a four-drop is, like, night and day. So, I... Depending on which cards with that mechanic actually end up seeing, you know, the light of constructed playability, it will kind of determine my opinion on that. But I'm, my gut instinct is uh, saltiness. Yeah. Okay. My gut instinct is saltiness. I fucking love that line. Okay. Also, uh, they're introducing a completely free-to-play single-player mode uh, with this expansion as well. Uh, is that of interest to you at all from a streaming perspective, or maybe getting new players in? Any thoughts on that at all? I mean, anytime Hearthstone adds a new format, um, you know, once every four years or so, uh, it's actually fantastic for the game. Um, I, honestly, I even if I don't play it myself, like Tavern Brawl, I recognize that it's just incredibly healthy for the game to have options like that for, you know, the more casual player base and the people that just want to log in, play for a little bit every day. Players like that keep the game alive, and it's you know that's the thing separating us from going the way of StarCraft. So let's. Uh, I'm all about those formats. I'm sure I'll. Uh, I'll play some of that solo adventure myself. Looks pretty fun, and uh, yeah. yeah. Other than that, anything interesting at BlizzCon for you? Any exciting stuff going on? Anything outside of the Invitational and the announcement? I'm um, pretty hyped to see our Heroes of Storm team compete, actually. We have uh, the Tempo Storm Heroes roster in top eight uh, here at BlizzCon, so, you know, going try to try to do America proud and uh, take one home for NA. They're, uh, they're really confident. They're playing against... A team that's won, you know, the past couple international tournaments. So it's it'd be it'd be a crazy upset if they get there. So I'm really excited for those matches, and uh, yeah. Other than that, just checking out uh, the event and hanging out with friends that you know I don't always get to see in one place uh, in one weekend. So is it difficult for you at all to uh, balance, you know, being on stage here and also having a team competing in in a tournament here? Yeah, I mean it's definitely not easy. I mean it's you know 16 hour work days and running a company. Absolutely sucks. It's actually the worst job. It's just eight hours of emails every day and lots of meetings. But uh, when I'm at events and I'm not like in front of a computer doing paperwork stuff, it's actually pretty exciting. Yeah. Doing the playing stuff is awesome. Doing the you know watching the team like that we sponsor and just has been a part of the brand for you know over a year is just also a great experience. So with all those things in mind, I uh, 
I, I, I would rather be doing too much than too little, so it's definitely fun. So you're not on stage all tabbing out of the game and answering emails during that time or checking the Twitch stream to see how they're doing? Uh, checking Twitch stream, yes. I definitely should be on my phone answering emails, but I tend not to during events, but you know, still, still taking care of a couple things. But you know. Very good. Well, hey, is there anything that you would like to say to any of the Tempo Storm or Rainad fans out there? Uh, yeah, thanks for the continued support, guys. It has been an extremely fun event. I would love to provide some clever quip and or rant uh, as per usual, but I have had 7 a.m. call time several days in a row. So, uh, yeah, just a quick reminder, if you ever want to pick up a beautiful, slim, form-fitting jersey such as this one, they are, in fact, available on store.tempostrom.com. looks really comfortable. It can breathe, I think. Uh, yeah, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, you know, with the 10% discount code TEMPO, you're basically losing money by not buying it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, think, I that's think that's just, how that works. Yeah. That's just math. Yeah, so, yeah. Very good. Well, thank you so much for the interview. Uh, looking forward to seeing how you do here and elsewhere at BlizzCon. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of our coverage of all things BlizzCon right here on my YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, I was so intimidated by interviewing the sellout master himself, Raynat, that I forgot to give a shout out to Omen by HP, my sponsor for BlizzCon, helping me and Avli out here. They are also, by the way, partnering with Overwatch League for next year, so be sure to follow them at Omen by HP on Twitter for more updates.